Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Okay, now we'll uh, come to uh, solid solution strengthening with a specific uh, idea. We just looked at it in a general formulation about an obstacle in a matrix in the initial slides. But now we will talk very specific uh, systems. So here is the schematic which has the uh, lattice and then and some of the lattice positions are substituted by the foreign atoms. So called, uh, you know, substituting substitutional solid solutions. And then you see that uh, the black ones and the open circle, they are of a similar size. But you, here you are also having a solute atom which is uh, smaller in size as compared to the, the rest. Okay. So what you see here is the slip plane. And then you know this kind of, uh, this is a void and this could be a edge dislocation, something like that. And the direction of the dislocation motion is this, this way and then this is a slip direction. All this you, you understand now. So now the question is, having the small solute atom in this position, what are all the consequences? This is what we have to understand. So now you know what kind of a stress field uh, surrounding an edge dislocation. We have sufficient idea. And when the solute atom is small as compared to the solvent uh, atom, then what are all the consequences? An edge dislocation moving on a slip plane containing a solute atom of a diameter of uh, atomic size less than the solvent. When the dislocation core reaches the solute, the compressive strain energy that is, uh, is somewhat relieved. So what is that we have seen in the dislocation core? the above the extra half plane especially the hydrostatic compression that is what we have seen so the compressive strain energy is somewhat relieved when the small solute atom goes and uh, get locked inside the dislocation core this leads to an attractive interaction energy between the solute and the dislocation this we have already seen if the solute atom were positioned below the glide plane, a repulsive energy would result. Okay, so this scenario is quite interesting. Now, a small solute atom, we are putting the dislocation core above the glide plane, then it becomes, you know, kind of attractive forces, attractive interaction energy. The same solute were positioned below this, it's a repulsive because you know the 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 stress field is quite different. It is tensile, hydrostatic tension, right? It's a repulsive. Thus, a small solute atom can, depending on its position relative to the glide plane, attract or repel an edge dislocation. Okay. A similar result is obtained, uh, obtained uh, when the solute atom has the size larger than the solvent. Okay. So we are now generally talking about size effect here. Okay. On the average, both relatively larger and smaller solute atoms interact attractively with an edge dislocation and an increase in the flow stress results. Okay. So whether it is a larger or smaller, the net result is the increase in the flow stress. That is what. Okay. Now, we are going to look at little more closely. Um, these two plots exhibit uh, comparison of the strains associated with spherical or tetragonal distortions. Okay. What is spherical distortion? What is tetragonal distortion? We can spend some time on this. I said that uh, if you bring uh, a foreign atom to a matrix, especially in this case, we are talking about a substitutional solid solution. Suppose the atom of similar size, for example, in this case, the, the open circle and the black 
uh, circles, they are of the same diameter. So, what you have to understand is the diameter of the, the solute atom, even though it is uh, comparable in size, they will not be exactly the same. They will produce some kind of distortion. Okay. But if it is of a similar uh, size, then the stress field around is going to be symmetrical. Okay. It is going to produce symmetrical stress field. Okay. On the other hand, if it is a small and it is not going to produce a symmetrical stress field around, this is what we are going to see. Okay. So that is what uh, shown in this plot. A spherical distortion produces a dilation for which epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, they are all same. What is epsilon 1? They are all strain components, strain components of uh, 3. Three, All the 3 strain components will be equal if it is a spherical distortion. Okay. For the tetragonal distortion, an octant of ellipsoid of revolution is formed. So this is what is shown, an octant of ellipsoid of a revolution is formed here. And what condition that could be? Epsilon 1 is greater than 0, epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 is less than 0, or epsilon 1 can be less than 0 and epsilon 2 is equal to epsilon 3 which is greater than 0. That means one strain will be ha having a different magnitude than the other two, but the other two will have equal magnitude. That's what it means, the tetragonal distortion. Okay. So now, I said that the spherical uh, distortion comes when, when you have the substitutional uh, solid solution. For example, if you take uh, chromium in iron or nickel in iron or chromium in nickel, these are all some, some of the classical examples where the the substitutional solid solution will experience spherical stress field. Okay. And then when will you have a, a tetragonal distortion? So before even going to the solute, if you compare the, the dislocation itself, the, the screw dislocation is completely associated with shear stress alone. Okay. So shear stress will be associated with some distorted bonds, which is uh, which is also creates a tetragonal distortion. Okay. On the other hand, in edge dislocation, we know both it has got distortions as well as dilatation or dilation components. Okay. The shear stress as well as normal stress. But as far as the screw dislocations are concerned, it has got only shear stress. That means it's only a distorted uh, I would say distorted energy or uh, distorted bonds, you can say, okay, distortion, uh, tetragonal distortions. Okay. Just tetragonal distortions in the lattice will significantly interact with screw dislocations because of this, because of the shear stress. Some examples we are going to see now one by one. The, the first one shows uh, the BCC lattice which is, is going to exhibit a tetragonal distortion. So an interstitial atom in a BCC lattice and uh, B is uh, a divalent ion plus positive ion vacancy in a monovalent ionic solid. So the matrix is monovalent and you have a, a divalent uh, substitution and a vacancy here. So this kind of uh, imbalance charge distribution is going to cause tetragonal distortion and here we are talking about the an interstitial atom which is going to sit in, in an octahedral void in a BCC lattice uh, is also going to cause tetragonal distortion. Okay. So, so we were talking about the dislocation and its uh, stress field and distortion and then now we are talking about the lattice which is having uh, tetragonal uh, distortion. So you have to be uh, you know clear about this. So only uh, you know wherever you are, whichever the interaction is going to make a significant uh, effect is all depending upon 
what kind of distortion and what, what kind of a stress field in both sides. So, in in the first one, that is the interstitial atom does not fit without a distortion in the structure uh, and this results in displacement of a solvent atom along the z, z axis, that is tetragonal distortion results. In the example B, the divalent ion and the associated vacancy relax by approaching each other. This also produces tetragonal distortion. The arrows indicates the direction in which the atoms or ions move in response to the presence of distorting agent. Okay, distorting agent. Okay. So this is one uh, simple demonstration about this distortion. Now I'll show a little more uh, uh, explanation on this with a uh, few more examples. What is shown in this slide is uh, first of all. The, the top image shows the, the resolution of shear stress into normal stress tolerance. Okay. Since we are going to talk about the stress field around the dislocations and, uh, uh, and the other solute atom stress fields, this is quite uh, significant. So you know this, uh, the shear stress can be resolved into in terms of normal stress. Remember the magnitude of both shear and normal stress is going to be same, okay? Whether it is uh, tension and compression, so the, the the magnitude of the all the three stresses are going to be same, okay? So when you have this uh, shear stress, for example, in a screw dislocations, and there we can consider this is getting decomposed into uh, these kind of uh, normal stress components and this will have that interaction with the the lattice energy now, okay, lattice uh, stress fields, okay. So now we look at uh, the first one, a non-symmetrical stress fields in the crystals. First one is octahedral interstitial site in BCC crystal. They will have anisotropy in 100 direction okay so here we are going to this arrow direction you can see and what is shown here is the interstitial site there are two possibilities one is in the edge center the other is in the face center okay in a bcc lattice both of them are octahedral sites the the question is whether these octahedral sites are of similar size or not they are not the the one which is in the edge is uh, typically in the order of 0 0.038 nanometer the one which is there in the face center is in the order of 0 0.156 nanometer and they have the anisotropy in 100 direction as well as 110 direction respectively okay we are we have not shown the other one but there is an anisotropy in these two octahedral voids itself so when you have this kind of anisotropy in the void size itself when the interstitials uh, i mean solute like carbon which is when it approaches here their attraction will be very strong because the 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 tetragonal distortion okay which is which is get which is getting generated in this bcc lattice is quite a large and uh, and that stress field are going to attract this interstitial carbon atom into this octahedral voids okay and the if you look at the carbon atom uh, size, which is about 0.154 nanometers, and they are going to, uh, you know, they are going to try to occupy into this uh, octahedral site, which is not very uh, convenient, right, to fill in, right. So that is why the 
the solubility of carbon in BCC iron is very low, 0.02%. Right? On the other hand, if you look at that the solubility in an FCC iron, it is uh, enormous. So if you look at the void size which is there in the FCC, it is, it is equal to 0 0.1 to 0 0.1. 102 nanometers, which is much larger than this uh, of the hydrogen void, where the carbon dissolves because the stress field there it's not like uh, a distorted one or asymmetric, it is a spherical stress field there. So, the carbon dissolution is more uh, when compared to the PCC lattice. So, that is it, it is it has got a you know enormous uh, technological importance, that's why. Uh, steel is becoming very popular and uh, still an important material all of you know this and uh, and it's a very classical example of uh, you know having a distorted lattice uh, but still forming a very strong solid solution okay so non symmetrical stress field in this pcc lattice uh, carbon as an interstitial is a classical example so they exhibit anisotropy in 100 and 110 also and if you take the second one, the divalent ion vacancy pair. So this is again showed in the previous slide, and it shows the anisotropy in one one zero direction. Okay. And here again, interstitial pair in FCC crystal exhibits uh, anisotropy in one zero zero uh, direction. Also, will produce some kind of a distortion, and uh, the Finally, the vacancy disk exhibits uh, anisotropy in one 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 direction. Also, will create non-symmetrical stress fields. So, these are all some of the uh, classical examples of uh, how the uh, crystal system will have non-symmetrical stress fields and uh, how they are going to interact with the uh, stress fields of the dislocation as the profound influence. So what we are now uh, seeing here is uh, energy versus position uh, plot where the dislocation is uh, approaching a soft uh, atom uh, as a solid solute atom in a solvent matrix. Okay. So what you are seeing here is uh, this is a dislocation and this is a position and it moves this direction and uh, what you are Seeing here is the energy of modulus, how it varies, varies with the, uh, the dislocation position, the energy variation. Okay, uh, we were just looking at the modulus, and uh, suppose if you look at uh, the size, and if you look at the size plus modulus, how they are going to compare in terms of energy. So how do we, what do we say, uh, why do we say soft? Because if you consider the modulus of the solute atom is, you know, uh, is less than the solvent atom. So then it is considered a soft and then that energy is going to vary like this with respect to the position of the edge dislocation. So if the soft atom of a given size, suppose if the small size and uh, they are going to reinforce each other okay and their force versus position so this kind of energy and force plots are quite familiar to us uh, we looked at in uh, quantum Mohr's scale right so uh, energy versus position and then force versus position it's the same idea here so if you have the uh, you know a soft atom and a small size they are going to vary the energy is going to vary like this and uh, they are going to reinforce uh, the energy and then this is simply a derivative of this reinforced curve so it is going to have attractive and uh, uh, repulsive or positive or negative force depending upon the positions for the soft atom on the other hand, if you plot it for a hard atom, that is the solute atom has got the higher modulus than the solvent, 
then it is going to be the energy variation is going to be like this with respect to the dislocation position and uh, the size is the uh, same it is just that the modulus is uh, higher than the solvent for a given size but if you look at the net that is uh, energy of size plus modulus is becoming uh, smaller but in this the previous case it was uh, a, a softer atom and uh, a smaller size they the energy is reinforcing but in the higher modulus and uh, smaller uh, size then the net force is uh, very small as compared to the soft atom okay in terms of attraction as well as repulsion so that means uh, a soft atom uh, with a smaller size will have strong interaction energy or a strong force with the uh, dislocation that is how you should look at it okay so the interaction energy versus uh, relative slip plane position of an edge dislocation is shown as a soft solute and hard solute for the soft solute the size and interaction energy is reinforced this is not the uh, for the hard atom so it is quite different so the size interaction is taken as the more important one and this results in the net attraction between the dislocation and the solute so even though the the uh, energy of uh, you know high modulus Uh, solute and uh, size varies like this but the net is still an attractive the interaction force position relationship for these repulsive uh, sorry these uh, respective cases is shown in cnt so that we already see the force proportional to the derivative of the energy quotient curve is negative or attractive as the dislocation approaches the solute atom for both situations the force necessary to continue dislocation motion that is f max is that required to tear the dislocation away from the solute okay so we are now uh, talking about the interaction energy of the solute with respect to dislocation position that means uh, their interaction they are interacting they are holding together uh, whatever it happens but if you look at the force necessary to continue the dislocation if the dislocation has to continue to move surpassing these obstacles then that force has to tear the dislocation away from the solute so that is f max is should be high enough whether it is a soft or a hard or whatever may be the case if the dislocation has to move from this obstacle f max should be higher as a result of the adding of the size and modulus effect this force is greater for the soft atom very important idea so we are talking about strengthening mechanism so that means you this gives a a clear idea if you add a soft atom to the solvent that is going to result in a f max is higher okay you are going to require higher f max higher force um, to move the dislocation both size and modulus effects produce a dislocation solute atom interaction energy that is elastic in nature please uh, once again understand we are still talking about elastic energy okay we are talking about elastic the all the forces are still in elastic in nature okay so uh, we will compare the uh, similar situation that is the dislocation solute atom interaction energy versus position for hard atom for which the modulus interaction energy has greater magnitude than the size interaction energy now earlier we have uh, looked at uh, a moderate modulus interaction energy now it is significantly hard okay significantly higher modulus interaction energy with a hard particle so this is uh, uh, higher interaction energy but keep the size same 
and then what kind of uh, the force uh, position plot will come is shown here. So the net positive energy results in the force position term. So this is a net positive energy. Here the force F max required to continue the dislocation motion is that necessary to push the dislocation by rather than the as the case of the negative interaction energy the force required to pull the dislocation away from the solute atom. Okay. Here slightly different. There we said that tear away. Here it is kind of a push. We, we require little slightly in opposite sense. Okay. The, the dislocation motion uh, to be continued and the necessary force is to push the dislocation okay, by the solute atom. The solute atom is supposed to push the solute uh, dislocation to move away from this or keep the dislocation motion in continuation. Strengthening results regardless of whether the solute atom dislocation interaction is attractive or repulsive. Very, very important point. We are looking at uh, very closely uh, whether it is attractive or repulsive depending upon the dislocation configuration as well as the type of uh, solute and its size and its modulus. Okay. Ultimately, it is going to produce whether it is it's going to get attracted towards dislocation or it's going to repel the dislocation. So the, the net energy, whatever is going to result out of this interaction is going to be beneficial for the strengthening of the material. That is the information. Okay. Okay, we will stop here. We will continue the lecture in the next class.